On today's episode of In The Know, we'll explore the latest updates to Intuit Enterprise Suite. Hey, Pro Advisors, it's Jacqueline, and you're watching In The Know, where you get exclusive access to demos of Intuit product enhancements by the leaders who built them. Let's jump right in with Daniel for a look at what's new with Intuit Enterprise Suite. Daniel, welcome. Thanks so much, Jacqueline. Really excited to be here and even more excited to share all the great innovation we've brought to market for the Intuit Enterprise Suite in our last release. Let's jump into the fast facts. So before the demo, let's cover what we're going to be talking about. So this is really meant for accountants who have clients that have multiple entities. Uh, they have intercompany transactions, then you prepare consolidated financial statements, and ultimately need um, more granular reporting across those entities. Specifically, we're going to cover centralized chart of accounts and dimensions intercompany sales automation, and enhanced multi-entity reporting. Everything we're covering now did go live in our summer release back in July um, and only available in the U.S. for now. Maybe one day, eventually, we will expand beyond the U.S. That is the plan. All right, so the first thing we're going to cover is the shared chart of accounts and dimensions. So when you log in and you navigate to the regular chart of accounts page on any of the entities in the group, you will notice that it's a bit different in that you can no longer actually create accounts through that interface, right? You can view, but you can't actually create or make any changes here. And you will also notice that this pop-up up here appears and it kind of gives you a bit of detail. So now that you've combined everything, you'll make edits and add new accounts through the share chart of accounts. So there's a direct link there, um, as well as if you go to just above the regular chart of accounts, you will see share chart of accounts. So let's head over there. Once you're here, you will notice a bit of a different interface than you're used to. Specifically, you now have a new column called companies using this account, right? So here you see my debit preference has a one here. Um, and let me show you an example of one that I know has a few assigned to it, a few companies. I'm looking for professional services. And so here I see professional services. I've got six companies that are using this account. Uh, if I click on here, I can edit it. And here I can see exactly which companies I have uh, this account assigned to. And I can also expand this and add it to my other two companies if I wanted to. Right, then I click save. And then this account would be available in those two companies as well to be added, as you can see. I'm going to cancel that for now. And so that's how you would do editing. And if you want to add a new account, you can do so. And from off the bat, select which companies or entities you want this account to be available in. One caveat I will call out here is that only the primary admin of the parent entity will have access to the shared share of accounts in the current construct. Um, in the next release, we will be expanding that to, to allow different users um, and custom permissions. So you'll be able to customize exactly who you want to have access to the shared share of accounts. But from a compliance perspective, right now we're limiting it to the primary admin of the parent company, but that will change in the next release. All right, so that's the shared chart of accounts. Oh, sorry, one more caveat is that in order to actually use the shared chart of accounts, you first have to go through our onboarding process where we have an agentic experience that will help you map your chart of accounts across all the different entities to one standard chart of account. Once you've done that, then you will be given access to control them from a shared list like you see here. And to see where you would access that agent, you see it on the business feed. It'll show up as one of the tiles here. So a chart of account standardization, so this is the cleanup tool, um, as well as if you're going to the shared chart of accounts page for the first time, it will also prompt you to run the cleanup agent first, and then you'll be able to manage your shared chart of accounts that way. Next, we're going to go over to dimensions. Okay, and so here you see a new element here underneath the title of the dimension. So here we see customer type and below you now see the company name that this dimension belongs to or is available in. And so you keep going and then we see when there's more than one company, it'll actually give you the number of companies that the dimension is available in. And so for example, in customer type, we look at edit share settings and we see it's only available for keys of construction. And then if we wanted to expand that, we can actually select all the other entities um, or even just select all. And then um, it will be cascaded down to those other uh, companies. We also have a warning up here that tells you, hey, we've actually noticed that you've got a dimension with the exact same name at multiple companies, but um, they're not they're not one dimension. There's 
two dimensions with the same name, essentially at different companies. So here we see utilities. This one's available in two companies. This one's available only in Keystone Vault. And so the recommendation here is to combine them so that you have central control. And when you do your reporting, it will be aligned that way. And now we don't yet have a tool to auto merge them. So it would be a bit of a manual effort, but we are working on a tool that will allow you to merge those so that it would be a seamless process to transfer all the historic data to the new dimension. So that is coming. Okay. And then similarly, create a new dimension, give it a name, and then you can select which entities you want them to show up in. It defaults to all. If you only want it in some of the entities, you're able to do that as needed. Um, in terms of access to this, really any user who has access, even standard all access, will be able to go in and create dimensions for now, because we do know there's a lot of uh, use cases where it's not necessarily the admin that you want doing this. In future releases, we are going to release granular permissions here too. So you can control who have access to deploy new dimensions or reclassify or rather edit which which companies various dimensions um, are available in. So that is coming in a future release. All right. So that's the um, centralized or standardized lists, in this case, chart of canceled dimensions. Now we're going to pivot to intercompany sales. So this is something new we just launched where you can actually go ahead and create an invoice to a related entity in this group. And they will now be available in the customer list. So you'll see um, those entities that we, we actually pre-created those, those or rather automatically created those customers for you. And we've, we've given them a special name where after the name of the company, you will see IC customer, which means intercompany customer. So in this case, let's say I want to invoice a uh, Keystone Terra. You'll see that it now has an IC customer tag next to it. So I can select that. And then I fill this out. Let's give it today. Let's say I want this to be lot clearing. I'll give it a quantity of three. And let's say I do want taxes on it. And I'm happy with this. So, so essentially here, I'm invoicing one of my related entities, right? So I click save and close. Now the invoice is created. And now the system will actually automatically create the bill on the other entity side. So you don't have to manually create that and they will be linked. And so you can actually see that if you go to multi-entity intercompany transactions, we now have a new intercompany transaction type. So it's no longer just allocations. It's also linked transactions, right? So these are intercompany sales. So here you see, I just posted this one. So the invoice size posted, but the bill side needs a review. And to access that, I have to switch to Keystone Terra. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right. Once I'm in Keystone Terra, I can then go to expenses, bills. And then under the for review section here, I ha now have a new section called intercompany bills. Now, anybody who has access to the bills list here will have access to review this and uh, approve them. So in this case, here we go. If we open this up. All right, once it's open, we then categorize this bill. Let's say in this case, I'm just going to throw it to sure professional fees. And once I'm happy with this, I click accept and close. All right, so now we've posted that bill. And then when we go back to Keystone Construction, the parent company that initiated that transaction, a couple more things we can do. Okay, and when I land back on Keystone Construction, I can then navigate back to my intercompany transactions. And then here I can see that now uh, both the invoice and the bill have been posted. I can see a couple of these different transactions that I've had uh, intercompany sales in. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and click create the elimination for us. And so we will actually pre-populate the manual elimination form with uh, all the necessary reversals for that um, for the elimination related to that intercompany sale. So you can see um, AR, um, you can see the taxes, AP, and then the actual P&L accounts as well, all getting reversed. Um, I'm happy with this. I click save, transaction saved, and there it is. There it is. Um, we post the intercompany sale and we handle that uh, elimination for you. And then now you can actually view the transaction journal and relate to this. Um, I'll also mention that on the bill side, we actually do automatically attach a PDF of that original invoice, as well as any memo um, details you've entered in that invoice do get transferred over. And so all that is available on the bill side too, with the elimination automatically created and posted for you. 
So that is the intercompany sale. Now, anybody who can post invoices will be able to do that. I should also mention another caveat here is if you've already created customers or vendors before this went live, you will likely now see a duplicate, right? You'll see your original customer or vendor being the intercompany related entity. And now you'll see the one we created for you with the IC vendor, IC customer tag next to it. And so what you would want to do at this point is actually merge them. And the way you would merge them is you rename the old record that you created yourself to be the exact same name as a new one. And when you do that, the system will prompt you to merge them. And then you'll be able to actually merge the one you create into the one that we created for you. And so what it's, it only works that way. You won't be able to merge the one we created into the one you created. So you have to use the, the one we automatically created for you. And then, you know, it'll be available both on the vendor side and the customer side on the transaction forms, um, whenever you do your, in your company sales. Okay. So that is the new company sales. Next, let's pivot to reports. And so if we actually go to our reports, our reports hub, we will now notice a new section called consolidated reports. And so this is everything from AP detail, AP aging, same for AR, the standard financials that we've always had. We now have a transaction report, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then we have a new consolidated expense by vendor report. Now, when we just did our intercompany sale, um, that is a regular business transaction, right? It's not a loan to um, one of the entities. It's, it's a business transaction, meaning it automatically hits AR and AP. And so now we've also enabled the ability um, to open up your AR report. And now we can actually go to our filters and filter for transaction origin. And you can filter between internal and external. So if you do external, this will only show you the ones that are with external parties. So not with related entities. So it filters those out um, or you switch it to internal and then you'll see only the balances related to um, my related entities. So that is a new filter option we've added since now we do have those transactions, those related party transactions uh, hitting AR and AP. Um, Next up is that we can actually save reports. So if we actually do create filters or display, but different display buys or groupings, um, you won't have to recreate them every time. You can actually save that customization and then reopen the saved report and not have to recreate all that filtering and grouping uh, from scratch. In this case, I'm not going to save, but if I wanted to, I could. All right, next we're going to jump into our consolidated PL. And here, there's a couple of things that are new that we're going to talk about. Number one is you can now actually display by dimensions as well as transaction dates. So in this case, let's say I want to display by revenue source. And now I'm going to be looking at my consolidated PL displayed by revenue source as the column headers across all my entries. This is on a consolidated basis. So I can see this is the total for advertising, social media, and so on. Um, I can also filter my company. So let's say I only care about maybe these two, maybe these three, and it will filter accordingly and show me the PL by dimension for those three entities on a consolidated basis. Next, we're going to look at displaying by transaction date. So I can actually look at this by month for my current fiscal year, year to date. There it is. I have my monthly breakdown on my consolidated PL across these three entities. I can also expand it to all the entities. And there it is. Now, the last thing we're, we're going to talk about is drill downs. So now we actually create the ability for you to click into any of the values and drill down to the underlying transactions, uh, or rather the underlying tr detailed transaction report. So in this case, let's say I want to look at this 2 million here in June. Let's see what we'll makes up that 2 million. And there it is, your consolidated transaction report. And so you can see all the different transactions and also uh, you'll notice there's now a company column here. And so you can see the uh, companies that contributed to that amount. Now we can't yet drill down into the transaction itself. That is coming in a future release. So right now it is, you can't really click into anything. Um, but at the very least, you can see which which uh, transactions uh, make up that number. And then if you did want to get more detail, you'd have to navigate into that entity and open up that invoice or whatever it might be um, to get the actual transaction uh, open. But um, in a future release, in the near future, we will um, allow you to actually open the transaction directly from uh, this report, even if it's not from the entity you're currently in. For example, if you want to open this 400 bucks from Keystone Terra, you'd, you'd be able to click this, it'd open that transaction form and then you tab. 
while you still allowing you to maintain your, your position inside Keystone Construction, which is the parent company. All right, so that is the drill down. And then the last thing that we're going to talk about is our vendor list. Because as you know, we do also have a cleanup experience for vendors. Now we don't have a, a standardized vendor list and control over that across all the entities just yet that is coming. But we do have a tool that lets you actually map and rename and ultimately uh, get all the vendors aligned for a point in time. And then you'll be able to run a consolidated expense by vendor report. And here you can see all the different vendors. And then you can actually add in display by, throw in a company in here, and then you'll be able to see what the expenses are to all different vendors across your different entities. So for example, here, I see that electrical supply company, 8,000 with Keystone Construction, 32,000 with Keystone Terra, and so on. And that wraps up our overview of some of the really exciting releases that uh, came out this past summer. I find them extremely exciting. I hope you guys find it valuable as well and looking forward to showing you the next one. Thank you so much for that demo, Daniel, and for being on the show. And thank you for watching. If you find this update interesting or helpful, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. That's all we have for now. For more product updates and demos, check out our In The Know Hub. We'll catch you next time.